So sometimes you want to introduce a digital technology because it's easy for people. So if you give, let people use their phone, they're, they're good with that. Um, and it makes them feel comfortable with their own phone. and they're able to, So that's great. Sometimes you're introducing a digital technology because it's unfamiliar and disorienting. And what you're really after is, um, so there's some work coming out of the field of education on, on affective dissonance. So the feeling where you're, you're uncomfortable, you're feeling uncomfortable, but you need that discomfort to allow you to learn something new. And sometimes digital technologies allow us to do that. So one of the other projects I'm working on which is called the Digital Oral Histories for Reconciliation. It's a virtual reality-based project. Um, deals with very difficult subject matter. It's the stories of the life experiences of um, children who lived in a segregated care institution in Nova Scotia in Canada that was called the Nova Scotia Home for Colored Children. So African Nova Scotian children lived there and suffered terrible abuses over decades. So in this project, we're dealing with very difficult subject matter, and, um, and we are rendering it in virtual reality. Former residents of the Nova Scotia Home for Colored Children, um, in the last, over the last uh, five, seven years, have seven years ago formed an association of, uh, um, among themselves, which has ha had a very um, influential activist agenda in the province that has resulted in a formal apology from the province of Nova Scotia to the former residents, as well as a restorative inquiry process into the history of the home, so a formal legal process that's uh, mandated by the provincial government. So, and, and in all of those processes, the, um, they, they are identified as um, uh, focused on the Nova Scotia home for colored children, so on that place. The project began, the, its inception, the oral historian who is the uh, principal investigator of this project, her name is Christina Llewellyn, she's based at the University of Waterloo as well. Christina was really interested in the, um, the need for a place-based approach to teaching about this place. The place, the building actually also still stands. And it's a kind of a monument in the community um, because for, um, for many years it was understood in a very um, shallow way as a symbol of the success of the community in caring for um, black children. So, uh, and the complicated history was hidden. So it, um, it now has a very complicated identity as a monument. And that, um, so, so in that sense it's very much um, it, it's very much a problem of what is the meaning of a place. What virtual reality permits us to do because it's um, a three-dimensional surround um, image is displacement or replacement. So to create the illusion of place. Generally what we do, and I've done a bunch of this work, the, the um, simulated environment for theater project was really in, invested in this, I was early in my career. Um, when we do historical reconstruction, what we're doing is essentially interpreting the documentary record um, and answering questions, resolving problems, filling in gaps. In the case of this project, we needed to ask questions and open up gaps in the documentary record, reveal the gaps in the doc documentary record. So, the, so we, didn't, we needed to not um, give you a really convincing illusion that you were in a real historical place and you'd seen the real thing and you know for sure everything that had happened. It was really important to resist that temptation. And then lastly, of course, we, we have this ethical imperative not to reproduce the harms that were committed there. So that meant no simulation. So what that meant was we were, we were working in this place-based medium, but we were trying to avoid doing any of the things that people think that it's good at doing. And, and a lot of the work of the project has been to try to think how do we disrupt the um, immersive, the kind of impulse to um, uh, what's often called in, um, in the, virtual, the scholarship on virtual reality or in media studies, the transparency of the medium. So making the medium disappear so that you forget that you're not in real reality, you think you really are in that place. We've done a lot of the design work that we've done has been about trying to create an experience where you always remember that you're not really there. And a really uh, important governing principle is what is called a relational approach that comes from, um, so it's, uh, in Canada, it's um, really the, the person who's articulated what this means in relation to restorative justice is Jennifer Llewellyn. She's a law professor at Dalhousie University, and she's been a really important member of the, of the research team. 
So what a relational approach um, says is that um, we don't, we are not, um, are, we're not focused on specific concrete outcomes. We're focused on engaging in just relationships as a means of, in the case of this project, specifically addressing um, systemic, institutional, and individual racism, which is both historical and persistent um, in the present. So what that meant was that um, the, the um, working method for this project needed to involve a lot more people, a lot more closely in the design of the digital tool that we were making, the digital experience that we were making, whose um, expertise comes from somewhere else. A, a phase of the project where different members of the project um, uh, talked with one another about the, per the perspectives they were coming from. So we spent some time looking on, at virtual reality, what was out there in virtual reality. We spent some time talking about, well, what do we mean when we say when, about sonography? When we say we're going to create a, a virtual space, what do we mean by that? What are the components of sonography? Um, what's going on with the restorative inquiry in Nova Scotia? What are the goals of the Association of Voices? What is it? Um, what does it mean to engage in this work together? Um, so the former residents of the home have a, uh, a they, they describe what their work as a journey into light. So we needed to talk about what's that? What are my commitments if I join that journey? So that's phase one. Phase two then is when we started to get to, uh, to the design work. So that was a period of about six months. I would say for fi five of that, five months of that time, I was spending four to five hours a week um, in conversation with the uh, storytellers and Jennifer Llewellyn. Um, those conversations would go back to the artistic team and we would, um, so we produced concept art, we brought the concept art back to the former residents, we talked about that, we talked about then, so what is the transition from the concept art to the um, actual build, and we showed drafts of the build, the changes went back and forth and back and forth like that. Um, there will be, of course, this, um, you know, the thing that we finally made is ultimately a component of a curriculum. So there will be another phase, another major iterative phase. Um, so if we say, you know, introductions, design, build, then there'll be an implementation phase, it'll go into schools, um, and, and it will be assessed, learning outcomes will be assessed, then there'll be another revision after that. So we're engaged, I think, in a large part in a project um, that we might call discursive. It's about words and ideas, uh, and if we can, um, and and um, if we can do that, if we can change how people are thinking and talking to one another, um, then we have a uh, the, the opportunity to change the way they behave. That I think is what we're good at in the humanities.